Hi everyone, in this video I want to share with you one important thing that you should do in order to succeed in your business or in your career. And this is setting out beforehand and figuring out beforehand, or right now if you haven't, your values, your, your goals, your standards, and what you stand by. Now the problem is most people don't do this, they don't really decide and figure it out. And the problem with this is that later in the future, they will fall into situations where that is questioned or they're confused or they don't know and they face decisions where they're not sure because they haven't prepared ahead of time. And some of these things may be unethical. You know, some of these things may, you know, put you in a embarrassing situation in the future if it, you know, becomes public or it may just, you know, do things that are, you know, contrary to what people think of you. And that's fine if that's what you choose uh, to happen. But if not, then you have to you know, really do this. And I wanna share with you two big YouTube channels who have done just this. And it's especially important on YouTube because it's kind of like a feedback loop because what you stand by and what you define yourself as, it kind of sculpts what types of videos your audience is used to. So betraying that may affect your audience's loyalty and it may cause people to leave you and on the flip side even if it doesn't or you know even if things go smoothly if that's not what you stand by it can go horribly wrong because maybe you're promoting the wrong message or you're showing a different side that's being exposed to a lot of viewers and that could be screwing them over so here are the two big YouTube channel examples. The first is Devin Supertramp. This is a guy who has millions of subscribers. He's very well known on YouTube uh, by a lot of different communities. And basically, he gets expensive video equipment, has a whole team. They go to like a tropical destination or some weird, you know, cool place. And then they just film it in really cool angles. I've seen a, a few up and coming channels do this. One in particular who does it just as well, if not better. So I just find that interesting. There's a little bit of competition nowadays. But anyhow, here's his story. Devin Supertramp, you know, he's now gotten successful after, you know, you know, hearing about YouTube and having no channel and, you know, coming from nowhere. And his, you know, journey was not this upward pathway, but he's finally gotten here and he finds himself in a situation where he has already signed a contract uh, and is doing this sponsorship deal to make this video. And out come, you know, dozens and dozens of scantily clad cheerleaders. Now, for a lot of YouTube channels, for sure, um, that's not going to be a problem because that's the audience that their channel is. That's the type of person they are. They're entertained by that sort of stuff. And it's cool. But his standards and his channel and how he knew his audience, all those things together he knew that this was not right for his channel and it's not the more importantly it's not the message he wanted to promote he didn't want to attract scantily clad uh you know he didn't want to attract certain types of men by using scantily clad women so he almost had to cancel his contract he eventually had them you know clothe up these cheerleaders a bit and they were about to back out on a contract because Devin told them I didn't want to do this and they weren't willing to you know proceed unless this these cheerleaders were in the video the way they were with the clothing they were so it was a huge mess and eventually Devin Supertramp had them more modestly clad and proceeded with making his video so it worked out and he stuck he stuck to his values the next example is a YouTube channel and this channel, the next is a YouTube channel called The Piano Guys. This is basically a music channel and they are also very well known, millions of subscribers. And for this channel specifically, the big issue was that they had just created this huge production. They knew it would be a huge smash hit and they were about to release the video, but it wasn't in line with the values and the things that they wanted to promote on their channel. It was a completely new type of video 
and basically what it was was them playing music but in the process fighting each other using props to smash each other on the head and basically a lot of violence uh, along with music and it was different from what they'd done before but they ultimately despite a lot of people telling them to release this because they knew it was going to be a hit they chose not to release it because it wasn't in alignment with their values and it promoted things that weren't in alignment with their values now again for me personally I'm just like okay violence it's not a big deal for me uh, and I wouldn't have cared but I guess for their audience what they wanted to promote they didn't want that violence they didn't think it was worth it and perhaps you know they thought that you know it may have gotten short-term virality but it would have pushed away a lot of their audience and it may have conflicted with a lot of the values that their audience had and made them leave or maybe tainted their future or their branding or their reputation which is very very important if you have a specific brand or reputation as Warren Buffett says a reputation can take 20 years to build and 10 seconds to ruin so for any business the same thing happens you know if you taint your reputation if you're known as the high quality high tier product and then one day very publicly you do something very sleazy your whole reputation and trust is ruined and that's going to drive away a lot of customers so all of these are potential possibilities to things that you know would have affected them in the long term if they released that video for me personally like I don't really understand why that's such a big deal it's just violence but uh, for their audience and what they wanted to promote it may have been a huge deal and all of these things really align with uh, some of the uh, business books I've read and there's two business books that are one of my favorites because they combine an extensive amount of science and research and objective testing and analysis to the best most successful profitable companies in the last few decades and I highly recommend reading them these books are good to great by Jim Collins and built to last by Jim Collins and even if you're not a part of a business I think the same logic and principles in the book can be applied to your career to your life to an organization to a nonprofit to a lot of different things and it is just a mind-blowing book with so much science and so much amazingness in it and one of the most amazing things in the book is how a lot of these amazing companies they define their values and goals and priorities before or along the process of building their company and these values and goals and priorities oftentimes did not have to do with money these were things like being in the forefront of innovation or making a difference to the world or spreading magic and enjoyment and promoting creativity and imagination and they recognize money and cash as simply the lifeblood the lifeblood of the business in order to survive and thrive but not as the main priority and this was huge and again you can see the parallels between the, these and these top YouTube channel examples I've given and I just think that's huge because when you compare these great businesses to their comparison groups they had comparison groups in these books which were groups that were started in the same exact year but uh, even though they're in the same industry and sold the same goods and services they floundered and they did horribly and a lot of these groups they had a lot of things that were just you know their values were only in alignment with money or more than likely oftentimes they didn't even take the time to write out any values and goals and make sure that they were prevalent in the culture and understanding of every single employee in that business and those types of things paid off in the long run over a few years a few decades into billions of dollars so so I just want to give a couple bonuses since you stayed to the end of this video just a few fun facts regarding YouTube so there are currently about 1,500 YouTube channels with at least 1 million subscribers. This number is growing almost every week. But, 
you know, a good portion of these are brands or musicians. So there's only maybe about less than a thousand YouTube channels that are actually personal channels of actual people. So of these channels, there are two that, and that's just very fascinating because out of the seven or eight billion people on earth, there's only a elite group of a thousand people who inhabit this department. Now, here's an interesting fact. Two people of this group, they both had so little friends in school that they went to the bathroom and ate their lunches in the bathroom stalls, just like in Mean Girls, the movie. So these people are Prank Invasion, otherwise known as Chris Monroe, and Devin Supertramp. Both of these people <laughs> both of these people had so few friends that they ate in the bathroom during lunchtime. As you can see, both of these people have turned around their entire lives and their entire business. As you can see, you know, both of these people didn't let this stop them and they've continued going and they're doing fairly well right now. The second thing is, <laughs> now I want to leave, now I want to leave you with the second bonus fact. There's two YouTubers in this group I mentioned who also were rejected from their dream school. And this was at a time in their lives where they loved YouTube. They spent a lot of time on YouTube. They weren't successful on YouTube yet but they had a huge passion for filmography and video and film and they applied to their dream school and they thought that they would get in or they had a good chance and they were flat out rejected. These people are Joey Gracefa and Devin Supertramp. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. If you guys want to know the sources from where I got these facts, again, I spent a, a lot of time on YouTube just learning and watching a ton of videos, speeches, interviews, commencement speeches, all sorts of stuff. So I, you know, very occasionally pull out these really random strange facts or similarities. And, and so, so, and so I learned about prank invasion from watching his vlogs. I work. I learned about Devin Supertramp from watching his vlogs, and I learned about Je and I learned and I learned about Joey Grace Safa's past by reading his book. That's all I gotta say. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.